Hello everybody and this is Ty back with another video and it's been a long time since I've done a video mostly because I've been rearranging things and not really working on anything but I decided I could work on something that I had the parts to do and this is the chassis um, board out of the monitor to this Donkey Kong Jr. that I got for free and it worked except for the fact that the screen is kind of you know if you look at it it's kind of squished in like this um, and so I'm gonna put a cap kit in it there's the tube out of the out of the case and over here I have the chassis which I've washed and dried and uh, here's the uh, cap kit in here um, got this from uh, the real Bob Roberts it makes it really easy because you have you get every cap you need and then you have a nice list of the caps that need to be replaced and you see here I set this up uh, this is gonna help me out a little bit um, I always find when I'm doing a cap kit I'm always like looking for the sheet I lose it in the middle of doing a solder so actually what I did is I put it I took a clipboard that I had and I just uh, bolted it to the back of my uh, workbench like that with the uh, angle brackets and uh, it works pretty good um, and that way I'll be able to uh, you know look at look at the sheet without having to uh, let go of stuff so here we've got um I got my iron set up here I've got my there's my soldering iron there's my desoldering iron. Now this thing is pretty cool. I don't know if it's hot enough yet, but this is from just from Radio Shack. It's super cheap, and it'll do everything you need to do for the most part, unless you're working on the SMD mount things, which means surface mount device. And uh, this just gets nice and hot, and uh, there's a bulb down here, and you squeeze it. And the best way to do it is, see, I have, my, my, have it in my hand right here. I press it like that and hold it. And then I go up to the thing I want to solder. I would desolder. I put it up against it press until the solder melts and then I release the bulb take it away and then several times just shoot out the solder that was there so I'm just gonna show you on this one this is a C471 you can see it written right there I'm gonna take that cap out I'm gonna show you how easy this is so hopefully this is hot enough now I gotta do it further away because um I don't have my up close lens on here oops It's hard to do one-handed, so bear with me. There's one. You can see, boy, I, I'm just gonna get my little part. Okay. Where is my magnifying lens? Of course, now I wouldn't be able to find it, would I? On this messy, messy desk I've got of of memory, many memory cards. <laughs> I just said it. Maybe I can use my up close eyeglasses thing. Here, let's try this out. Hmm, that doesn't work. All right, you're just gonna have to look at it, look at it far away right now. Yeah, so I've got it. I've taken most of the solder out, but and see, I can just kind of wiggle it. Now, if I really wanted to, I could take and go back and I just kind of put it on there. But you don't want to lift the pad, so just kind of move it around a little bit. Do it a second time. It just fell right out. So there's the cap out of this. And uh, this one looks like it was in pretty good shape, at least visually looking at it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this one. And this is a 160 volt, 10 microfarads. Um, and what I'm going to do, farads or farads, 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 I think it is. I'm going to look at the chart that here. And I was at, this was C471, uh, which is down the chart and it is... 10 microfarads, 160 volts. I'm going to look in the kit that Bob has here. And I'm going to look for a 10. Here's a 10 250. So you got to be careful because you because you might have a couple in here that are different. So there's 10 250. Because that's, you notice that's higher than the other one. So you just want to find all the 10s here. That's 100. 100, non-polaric, um, I mean, the 16, wait, that was, how many farads was it? 
one two twenty two actually another two twenty another uh, we've got a non polaric one record that's obviously not gonna be used uh, another two fifty ten that makes me think that we're probably on the right one here it gives you the voltage just has to be at what it was or higher that's three thirty. 470, uh, 100, another one, another one, another one, another one, a 10. See, that one was 10, but it was this one's 1050, so this is way too low. Another one. Forty seven. One. Two twenty. Ten fifty. And ten fifty. Okay, so that's the one where one of these. One of these two I'm going to put in there. So now, if you can see it, in this, it's going to be blurry because I'm so, this stupid uh, flip cameras is just such garbage. Um, but the uh, shorter, when you look at a capacitor, the shorter lead is the negative lead. Let's see if I can get this light better. Um, so, and also along this, man, how far away do I have to hold this thing? Along this side is the, uh, the stripe for the negative, and it's labeled here as well on the um, board. On both sides so I'm just gonna put this in like that I'm gonna bend the leads out a little bit so they stay in place and the next step is to take some solder this will be interesting with one hand not really one hand but you guys can see it while I'm doing this because I'm gonna have to get this just right So there it is, installed. Get my clippers. Okay, so that's in there. And we got the negative side on the negative terminal there. So that's that one's done. We got one down. And so what I like to do is take a pencil. knocking things over I go to my list here and I just take and go draw a line through it now I'm gonna use a list I've used that list because when I bought the kit from me he gives you one list so I got I got multiple uh, kits because I had a bunch of these monitors now the other thing to do is after you replaced it so let you to let yourself know that you replaced it I take a sharpie And I just color in one of the side corners of the vents like that. And I know that's one I replaced. So I won't be looking at it when I'm trying to find the capacitor later on. So I'm not going to show this whole thing, but that's, that's how you do it. I'm going to finish putting all these caps in here, and then we're going to give it a test before I actually put it in. Now, I think I might need to do some other repairs to this because this uh, horizontal width coil right here, um, it should turn easily and it's frozen up I mean I can get a little bit of a turn out of it like there that's it you should be able to just screw it and adjust it so yeah so that's where I'm at with this and um, I'm gonna finish this up and uh, I'll maybe I'll put some more video at the end of this okay so I found my magnifying lens that goes to make so I can actually record up close to this um, this uh, ca this uh, camera and this is the first capacitor I removed from it. 
and there's one of the replacements. You see that they're pretty close in size, but I'm going to show you one of the ones that I, the second one I removed. Now this is the same rating, actually it's a little bit lower, but you see this right here? This, um, right here, um, this is leaked out right there through the rubber, and, uh, this capacitor is, is bad. You can, I can, you know, just by looking at it, you can just tell. And of course, you wouldn't be able to see it looking at it from the top, you know, like this. You're not going to be able to tell. <laughs> it looks fine. Um, the only way to know is to take it out or use an ESR meter. And, you know, the ESR meters are expensive and you have to know how to operate them properly. But just pulling this thing out, you can see where it's leaked. This one's bad. I'm actually going to replace it with this one, which is a lot smaller but it actually rated higher for voltage wise that's just because you know this one's really old and this one is a new one so I'll add some more as I get more okay the cap kit has been installed um, I should have taken some video of what it looked like before when I first got this game um, essentially the graphics only took up like this much of the screen squashed in and adjusting the uh, horizontal width did not, did not um, affect it at all. It would just make it spread spread out with inside there. So yeah, so I replaced all the capacitors in the in the uh, monitor, and uh, also there's a soundboard, and the uh, soundboard right there has been all been recapped, just like I do with my uh, Donkey Kong uh, uh, Junior. I mean, not my my Donkey Kong Cabaret, and uh, so if I can show you right there, there is the the uh, horizontal width coil, which would actually make the picture taller because the gate monitor is mounted uh, vertically. And next to that is the, um, oh, what's the next, the little black knob there, I can't remember what that one is, I think it's, whatever, something else to do with width. And then there is a pot right there in the center of the screen, and that adjusts the um, horizontal hold. And there's another pot right there, and that adjusts the uh, the brightness, the uh, intensity, color intensity kind of thing. And, of course, you've got your inside here, and you've got right in there. And those are for adjusting the um, the actual uh, the individual guns on it, which they don't need adjustment. Here's the main pots for adjusting the volume and a bunch of other, th other settings. And uh, that's pretty much the settings for it. Um, yeah, so, uh, but still, with uh, doing all those adjustments, you know, playing with those, it was not, I was unable to get it to look uh, good. and But now it does. It looks great. And uh, so that's it. And as a matter of fact, I'll show you over here. Flies everywhere. Ugh. So, it's that time of year. All right, so they're whip coming in for the winter. Um, so there's all the caps that I pulled out of this. And only one of them in particular in here looked bad. It was this one right here. And on the audio board, this one, you can see it's got a little bit of leakage right there. So that's in, those are all the audio board caps in there. And this is the, um, this is one of the transistors for the audio board. And here's the other one right there. So that's everything I need to replace in that. And it came in a kit. And as you said, I had the list here that I went through. And uh, thanks to Bob Roberts for uh, providing those uh, those cap kits. It makes it a lot easier. I hate to, I really hate ordering caps because you got to make the list and look everything up and then order it. You know, I have a little tips for ordering caps, but if I don't have to, I don't want to. Um, and, uh, oh, this tool right here, this is really good. This is for adjusting the horizontal width coil. Do not stick a hex head, I mean, a, a Allen wrench inside there and try to adjust it. If you do that, you will damage it. Um, this is because it creates a magnetic field. Um, this is plastic. And you still shouldn't turn it very hard. Mine was actually stuck, but I put a little bit of uh, WD-40 in in the uh, inside the uh, coil where the actual the little uh, magnet is, and uh, was able to just kind of work it back and forth until I loosened it up and was able to make adjustments. And this is uh, another tool Bob Roberts sells, and this is his uh, uh, special tool for adjusting. Uh, pots from very long distances away because sometimes you really don't want to stick your hand in there and there's some pots you just can't get into um, without you know sticking your hand in there so this this tool is very helpful and I'll show you this anyways this is a you know bit for taking part NES cartridges just sitting there so all right so this is done uh, in terms of getting the 
monitor all fixed. The only things left to do are to apply the side art um, on this cabinet. So you can see the cabinet's in great shape, but there was it was missing the side art. And uh, I was able to pick up this uh, this uh, a second quality side art. Now, what it's got on top of here is a it's got a mask. It's like masking tape to protect it until you pull, peel it off. And um, so that actually comes off pretty difficult. Apparently that's why it's cheap is because it's uh, it's stuck on there really well because it's probably older, and so I'll have a I have a bit of a time actually peeling it off. But once I have it on, it'll be fine. One of the things I discovered is that the operator who had this actually put extra carriage bolts going through to make this monitor make the cabinet more secure. On this side, it's not a problem. The cider would actually cover those extra holes. I'm going to just fill them in anyways. Um, there's another one down here. But on this side, um, you can see the artwork is still there on this carriage bolt. So this one will be covered. When you come up here to this one, this one won't. So um, I could adjust the artwork to cover it, but as we're talking like a half an inch, I, I gotta see how I feel about that. But I'm first I'm gonna, I've got the color match paint. I'm just gonna fill it in and smooth it out. Just that little tiny area, touch it up. So it's probably barely noticeable. And I'll see how I feel about that before I go and adjust the art. And here's the other, these are the monitor bolts, and these are stand, these are supposed to be there. And you can see there's the this is part of Donkey Kong's hand, there, and this is part of the red trim. And then on this side, it's got them as well, but I got I got the art over top of it. So uh, yeah, there is where I'm at with this. There is a couple other things I'm going to do. Is one, um, I'm going to replace this. I've got a new one of these stickers. And the same thing on the coin door. There's a little 25 cent stickers that go on there. And actually, I have like mint condition. I have brand new plates I could put on there. Um, just really depends how I feel about it because I only have two sets. And one set's going on the Donkey Kong 94. And the other set's either going on this or it's going on the DK Cabaret, depending on how I feel about it. I actually get, I think it'll go, I'll decide that once I um, f finish redoing that cabinet. And really all I'm going to do in that is just uh, paint the front where it's black. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a big job on that or anything like that. I just want to um, repaint the front of it and then replace the marquee, which I have a new old stock marquee to put on it. It's a sticker. And uh, yeah, and this I need to also polish up this control panel. There's the, some burn marks right there and another one right there. But that'll come right out. So you just take some... Uh, sandpaper and then you just po polish and buff it until it's all nice and glossy again here's the one that actually was on it and you see that everybody put cigarettes on these things and but on this one there's actually a uh, a gap where the cigarettes actually bent it up so i had another one that was meant for the other dk junior cabinet i had that it was converted to a play choice so i picked up another control panel for that one before i got this cabinet and it was in better shape, so I just swapped them. So this has got the better panel on it. There's a lot of junk on it right now. It just needs to be cleaned up. And it's just because I was moving things around. So, but it's in, this cabinet's in really excellent shape. I mean, the T-molding's like really good shape. And we got a, like a little nick here, and a couple little notches there. I can polish those out, you know, make it look better. So, I mean, I could replace T-molding, but I don't feel like doing it because this is the original molding. It looks good on it. All right, so that's it. I'll put this video together and upload it to you guys. And thanks for watching. Um, and uh, have a good night or a good day, whatever time you're watching.